All right, greetings everybody and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Global and JP because both Global and JP are sharing actually a bunch of stuff and there's just so much to talk about. So let's get into it. Uh, we're not going to be talking about really any of the extra stuff. We're just going to be focusing on mostly the units for right now. So let's talk about it because not too long ago, as a matter of fact, within, I think, three hours of this video being recorded, Global had its live stream, its fourth anniversary app uh, live stream for, you know, the fourth anniversary. Uh, Tongue tied on that one. But the important thing was that they talked about, I think, two new units for Global, right? You're getting the new version of Oldoa, which has been released on JP. And I've already made a video about her, so if you have, or a couple of videos about her, so if you want to go check that information, feel free. Uh, give me some extra ad revenue, why not? Uh, but not only that, uh, there was a new character announced, the global, not exclusive, uh, the new version of Joom, because she won the global voting contest, and for a while now, Viewers have been saying, ah, Joom's coming up, Joom's coming up, Joom's coming up, and here, sure enough, here she is. So let's see what she got. But uh, that's not the only thing. So there is the announcement of Oldoa. Uh, there's her global, at least that's my, I, I believe I saw that in the video. Uh, there's Joom, and for JP, JP is getting a new version of Mont, the final character from Ashes of the Apocalypse. Another story three comes to a close with this final character. So let's take a look at what we got. All right, so let's start off with Joom because Joom is uh, across both versions. As a matter of fact, April 1st, it's not an April Fool's joke. Uh, this character will be available for both versions of the game. And what's interesting, uh, I cannot confirm on JP because I, I did not hear about it, but at least or sorry, on Global, JP, if you note right here, there is a note that says that Joom can be bought from the store directly. You do not need to get her from Gotcha. And I'm curious if Global will be the same, given how the pricing and bundles of the 70 cost units were of essentially getting like the unit, uh, 200 shards and some other nip doodads to kind of help you raise them. I'm curious if June will be a similar pricing or more expensive as she is a 100 cost unit. But yeah, uh, that's just a positive thought and side note, uh, at least from the JP. So taking a look at June, the Spring Celestial 100 cost water type unit. Uses great swords. Main job is called Shining Blossom Blade on uh, Global. And yeah, I, I just want to shout out first off, like the unit herself uh, obviously looks gorgeous. I like the dress. It looks really, really neat. I like that there's still a hint of green in there. It's not just plain white. Uh, I like the little bit of the intricacies. I think, you know, it's not... I wish it was maybe a little more flowing all around. Obviously, votive artists and the designers showing their love of thighs again, and we cannot get away from that ever. So, sure, whatever, <laughs> great kind of thing, right? Uh, here on JP, I do believe that this was shared in the global live stream, but let's take a look just at the details from the JP character card. So first off, uh, Joom's uh, jobs include the new one, uh, Trick Lancer and Viking. Viking, probably a good amount of attack and whatnot. Trick Lancer, actually an interesting amount of range and potentially some spear synergy with the most recent version of old. So that's kind of cool. Uh, taking a look at her limit burst, the wider the target's effect, the more damage reduction effect will be removed. Damage after all attribute resistance down for three turns and extra large damage. An interesting limit burst, to say the least. I'm quite curious about what the actual numbers numbers on this, but it does look very, very impressive, at least from the get-go. 
Taking a look at the second ability, which JP roughly translates to the life of the flowering or blossoming, uh, gives an effect that reduces magical damage to allies within an area around the user for four turns, increase single target attack resistance. Attacks uh, when hit give an effect of removing immortal spirit or surviving a fatal hit. Uh, that would save the user from being killed. Uh, survive once if you take damage. Give an additional effect of slash and magic attack resistance up. And AP consumption down if that immortal spirit is in effect. And recover some AP. That's a massive, massive, massive ability. It's par for the courts for the fourth anniversary. So this character feels very, very much like a modern character. I have problems with the global version of Oberon that came out this year, but this character is absolutely looking fantastic just on those two abilities. We haven't got to the third one yet. So the third one, increase own slash attack resistance penetration for three turns, reduces a certain percentage of AOE resistance on the targets within range for three turns, then deals damage reduces magic attack resistance penetration rate and healing power for three turns. So what I gather overall from this unit, she seems very, very offensive, but with a aura style effect to protect other units from magic type damage. So a physical unit that is good against other mages and capable of supporting other units, as well as generating AP, removing gut status effect, as well as giving herself that effect, no less. And... The most big, 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 big thing for me is AoE Shred on this unit. I've seen how good it is on other units, and I am damn excited for Water and Ice to get this more directly than it previously had. Like, sure, you could with Wind Veritas or a couple other, but there are other sources. But I think that this unit is just looking incredibly powerful already. And I think that the AoE Shred here will be in good synergy with other units, uh, particularly A2. I mean, as a water unit, as a water and ice guy here in this game, this unit looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm really, really happy uh, to see such an interesting unit come along, uh, just from my perspective. Uh, I don't think there's really too terribly much else on the global live stream. It was talked about the vision card as well. Party ability is critical damage up, party ability for quest only, beast killer up, and bestowed uh, effect acquired JP up. So this is, I'm guessing, yeah, it's distributed and all of its shards for free. I'm guessing JP will also get this. Uh, JP acquisition up by 25. So there will be, you know, another vision card that comes out shortly after this. And we'll see how well it synergizes uh, with just the other unit that we're going to talk about for a sec uh, in a second here. But attack up, and it looks like offense is a major thing on the par for Doom. So very cool. Uh, very much looking forward to seeing all of the rest of the details on April 1st, because this unit, I think, is going to be kind of a home run. And last thing I want to say before we move on is... As much as I love the design of many different units in Wotive, the weapons sometimes look so much cooler. Joom's weapon is one of my favorite designs that I've seen in many, 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 many games over a long period of time. So I, I actually really like that. It's a shame that it's not more visible in the artwork here, but I, I absolutely uh, love the, the just the design, even that you can see in this picture. Shoutouts to the, the artists on that one. But, of course, that is not the only unit we have to talk about today. We have to talk about Ashen Mont, a character that we all knew was coming for a little bit now, ever since he was a major story uh, event. His reveal of the King of Ash turned out to be Mont and his compadres, and this is the end of another Story 3. So let's see what it's given us. It is an Earth Elemental character, so that... Uh, theory did actually end up holding up. Congrats. Uh, Ash King is his main job. Nightblade secondary and fighter third. So he does have a wide range of characters that he can potentially be partnered up with. He has, you know, two damage types here. Nightblade might give him a good amount of chaining if he has the triple chaining ability, which is good. 
for just different places, but yeah. Uh, so let's take a look at the abilities. All right, and first, the, I don't even know, like summon, vision summon ashen dust. So he's like summoning a bunch of like evil dudes to fight for him. Cool. Uh, limit burst ability. Activates an additional damage from attacking non-elemental damage and extremely small does not contribute to chaining effect. Earth attribute damage extra large after reducing single target attack resistance for up to two targets for three turns. Three turn haste effect that increases your own CT accumulation. So massive limit burst here. First off, it is specialized towards single target attacks. Which is very good, uh, I think, because... You're also reducing the single attack resistance on the two targets that you're choosing already, which is just seemingly very, very powerful. You're also getting haste, which is very, very good. And you're getting an Astria style secondary hit ability. All of this is just a lot for a limit burst to do. And it's already and it's also dealing extra large damage. It's kind of scary to think. And it has decent range of three panels, which is very likely to be activated. So that's not it. Let's take a look at the other two that we have. So, another attack type ability. Increase slash attack resistance penetration rate for three turns. Reduces a certain percentage of single target attack resistance for two targets for up to three turns. Deals two consecutive large damages and increases CT when an enemy is killed. Also, because there's not enough on this ability. Silence, too. So this limit burst is pretty crazy. We got a lot, lot, lot of stuff here. I mean, it's powering up his other attacks. It's also single target uh, resistant shred. Uh, or not shred. Yeah, percentage. So it is shred, which is really going to be quite an interesting thing to see how good it actually ends up being. As well as, you know, you're getting a CT boost if you kill a unit. You're, it's multiple hits, so it's good. It has some chaining properties. And you're also just getting silence potentially on top of it. Potentially really screwing over mage type characters, especially. So, cool. Super strong. Last ability. One more attack type ability. I'm sure he has some other skills in his kit, but these are what we're getting. After destroying the barrier that reduces physical damage... Deal damage with easy hit properties for two targets. So yeah, Mont across an entire theme here is single targets, but damn sure he is going to be hitting multiple targets at with or sorry with a single ability use. His limit burst looks absolutely strong, and what's really nice about it being a slightly smaller range, some of his other abilities is that there's a good chance that he will use his single target. Uh, AoE, or, AoE, shred. I don't even know what I'm saying. Single target resistance shred first before using any of his other single target abilities, which will just insanely power them up, especially with the um, amount of resistance. This is really, really good and looking really, really strong. His barrier removal, which leans into how DPS this guy is looking, but also he has sure hit. He has... Just a lot of different stuff, and this is only the stuff that we are seeing. Taking a look, too, you'll notice here that we have one really, really large master ability, which I did not translate before this. And just to make sure I got it, let's take a peek. Increase own slash attack resistance penetration rate by 20, area attack resistance of 10, additional effect, AP recovery, when silence activation... Hold on. Silence activation rate increased if under an effect. Interesting. So it actually is a bigger master ability than what we've previously seen. Mont isn't the answer to the aura problem, but he is potentially a very powerful DPS and maybe a strong enough DPS to really get through a lot of the tanks that are just propagating all of these auras and resistances. 
your hate doesn't matter because you can potentially hit multiple targets with this. Hate, or sorry, maybe hate matters less is more accurate. But it seems very, very strong. And as for what JP is essentially looking at, is a split road down the <laughs> AoE resistance shred or single target resistance shred. And both are looking quite strong. Now, there is something to say that Earth here could be a little less great if uh, wind is just ever fluorescent, but I'm sure that Mont will find plenty of parties to be in. And what we have here is kind of two great options for every player out there to try for. Or if you're super greedy, just pay for Joom and then get Mont on the banners if you want, or just whatever you want to do. Lots of different avenues. As for Globalers, it might be worth holding off on Old Doa for at least the initial part, unless you're a super big fan of her, to see how Mont changes the equation of what is exactly going on here. And June 2, for that matter. It could, because, yes, more recently, JP has shown that in the right team, multiple aura tanks is a friggin nightmare for a lot of people to deal with but that's just that we could see something entirely different change with what seems like a pretty major dps update as two major dps's are coming to the game of course global will be getting Joom at the same time but since jp is getting her at midnight you'll get a sneak early preview from JP. So stay tuned for me. That. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers and see you later.